the Otterbein Theater Department prepares for their first winter show and students go green for yet another year of Recycle Mania. This and more on TV3 News. From WOCC, this is TV3 News with news, sports, health, and entertainment. Your news starts now. Hello and welcome to this weekend edition of TV3 News. I'm Christy Farron and today is February 4th. The Otterbein Theatre Department is warming up the winter season with their upcoming comedic play, You Can't Take It With You, which runs February 4th through the 7th and the 11th through the 13th in the Frisch Theatre at Cowan Hall. Tickets are, for the show are $15 each and can be reserved by calling the Otterbein College box office. Student Cardinal Card ID discounts are available as well. The Sunday matinee on February 7th begins at 2 in the afternoon and all of our performances begin at 8 in the evening. For more information about the Otterbein 2010 theater and dance season, please visit the address below. The Westerville Sunrise Rotary Club will present its 14th annual Wendy's Chili Open this Saturday. The fundraising event, which will take place at the Columbus Zoo and Aquarium, is one of the largest fundraisers planned and run by the club. In addition to showcasing Wendy's Chili, the event will feature food from several local restaurants, live music, auctions, and other entertainment, with all proceeds going to local children's charities. This event has helped raise nearly $1 million for area charities, including the Dave Thomas Foundation Adoption, and warm. The purchase of an event ticket is $25. The ticket gives free admittance to the zoo and all of its exhibits for the entire day from 9 in the morning until 5 in the evening. And now let's take a look at this weekend's weather with Chelsea Faust Johnson. All right, thanks, Christy. Looking at this weekend's weather for you, it's going to be a bit snowy and cold, so make sure you be careful out there on the roads. For Thursday, a high of 36 and a low of 29 with flurries. Friday, a high of 33 and a low of 28, continuing with snow showers. And Saturday, again, more snow with a high of 31 and a low of 14. Now let's take a look at your week weather. For Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, it's looking to clear up a little bit with partly cloudy skies on Sunday and Mondays with highs around 25 and 28. And Tuesday bringing in some more snow with a high of 31 and a low of 14. Now let's take a look at the uh, northwest area of Ohio. You have a weekend average of about 27 degrees with snow flurries and a week average of 24. Um, taking a look at northwest Ohio, you have a weekend average of 29 with snow and a week average of about 25 with partly cloudy skies. Taking a look at the southeast, you have a weekend average of around 33 degrees with some snow and 31 with partly cloudy skies. And taking a look at the southwest, you have a weekend average of 35 with snow and a week average of 32 with some partly cloudy skies. And taking a look at central Ohio, there is a winter storm um, advisory in effect, so be careful this weekend with a high of 33 and some snow again and then a week average of 27 with partly cloudy skies. Welcome back. The Center for Community Engagement and Needing Minds are joining together to fight against hunger at the Super Bowl. On Friday from 11 in the morning until 1.30 in the afternoon, the public is welcome to give a $10 donation, which will give you a cup of soup, bread, and a hand-painted soup bowl of your choice. The soup bowls were painted by Otterbein students and alumni and children during the 2009 homecoming stop and serve. All the proceeds from the event will go to the Holy Family Soup Kitchen. And Otterbein will once again join over 600 colleges and universities from all over the country for Recycle Mania, a competition on college campuses to raise awareness for waste reduction and recycling efforts. The campus will participate in recycling initiatives and recycling theme activities through the end, uh, until the end of this March. Otterbein's effort is run by student-run environmental group Planet Earth. And throughout the year, high school students venture to Otterbein to begin their college search. And outside of the financial package offer and the decor of dorms, many students ask whether or not they should attend Otterbein. The Otterbein tour guides make that decision just a little bit easier. Students who come to Otterbein for a visit meet at Clippinger Hall, where they then set off with their guide on a campus tour. The tour walks on the sidewalks of the campus, through towers, the campus center, and other buildings. Tour guides can make or break a student's choice as whether 
as whether or not they would enjoy Otterbein. The guides are able to first present the information they can give about the school and then answer any questions. Along the one hour tour, the students, their family, and the guide can make good connections as well in hopes of the student becoming a Cardinal. It's not long for anything. Walton shot, good. Three ball from Keeney, nothing but net. Welcome to Sports Watch. I'm Jamie Detweiler. Otterbein's women's basketball suffers from a 15-point loss from their home game Wednesday night against Wilmington. The ladies are now in seventh place in the OAC and 8-12 and overall. Christy Cotterman led the ladies scoring with 16 points, followed by Shay McCoy with 12. Their next game is away at Muskegon on Saturday. Tip-off is at 3 p.m. and you can hear the play-by-play -play if you tune into WBN.net. Otterbein and Capital have been rivals for generations of fans. WOCC's Eddie Cornelson has the story on what brews this hatred. Otterbein College and Capital University, the D3 equivalent of Ohio State, Michigan. But what is it about these two schools that they don't like about each other? Well, I sought out some Otterbein students to find out exactly what that is. I'm here with Brian Hiscox. Brian, what is it about Capital that you don't like? You know, to be completely honest, it's really everything. There's nothing good about the school. They're unoriginal because if you look at their like naming their buildings or whatever, the Cap Center. Come on, be a little bit more original than that. Uh, their, their baseball facility is terrible. Their the mascot's lame. It, it's just everything about them is absolutely horrible. It's kind of an embarrassment to be a, to be affiliated with them at all. I'm here with Samantha Lang, a member of the Otterbein Band. Samantha, what is it about Capital you don't like? I just think we're a lot better than Capital, so. So it's less Capital hate and more Otterbein pride. Right. And what is it about Otterbein you love so much? Otterbein's just a great place. I mean, we've got some really good teams, and um, it's really fun to be with the band. Thank you. So a rivalry that has grown based on proximity, classic games, and fan antagonization, based on the Audubon student reaction, either hate for capital or love for Audubon has spurned this rivalry into what it is today. For WCC News, I'm Eddie Cornelison. The big rivalry brought a win for Audubon this time. Hope you were in the Reich last Saturday to watch the boys win. They also hit a, a school record of three-pointers three pointers in a game, making 15, seven of them scored by senior Brian Pollock. Capital had an early lead in the first half, and by the second half, the game was tied up. Closing the second half of the game, the Crusaders gave OC a turnover, leading to two free throws and giving Otterbein the scoring advantage. Otterbein improves to 5-14 and 14 overall and 3-9 and nine in the OAC, while Capital drops to 11-8 and eight overall and 6-6 six and six in the league. College sports fans got rowdy last night, but not in the Reich but in Morgantown, West Virginia, during the always bloody backyard brawl against Pitt. One of three technical fouls during the game was called due to a fan throwing a penny that hit Pittsburgh's assistant coach Harrion in the eye. Eventually, a bruise became visible. WVU's coach addressed the fans with 12 minutes left in the game, saying that's stupid to throw objects on the court. Mountaineer fans had been warned in the past few weeks through emails to tone down their behavior after vulgar language they expressed was heard on national TV when they played Ohio State recently. That's all I have for sports. Christy, what's left? Well, the Super Bowl is always known for football, friends, the halftime show, and new commercials advertising major companies. This year, however, Pepsi will not advertise drinks during the Super Bowl, which ends a 23-year run. Pepsi beverages have been advertised in the Super Bowl since 1987. The company wants to have more of a focus on marketing efforts that will appear mostly online. On average this year, an ad time costs about $3 million for about 30 seconds. But you know, people definitely tune into them, and that's for sure. And I am definitely looking forward to the commercials on Sunday. And that's all for this edition of TV3 News. On behalf of the entire news crew, thanks for watching and have a great weekend.